Um, I, I thought it was very informative and you seriousness or sincerity about this topic was evident throughout. However, one thing that I thought was missing while I was listening to you throughout this time was could you convince us even more? And could you could you make a stronger emotional com connection to why coaching was valuable? I know you took this one instance which was the, the ultimate climax of, oh, when this lady called you and said, oh, we, get, we became select distinguished for the first time and you really, it had an impact on you. Could you make it even more impactful? Maybe say how that helps, you know, other clubs, like go beyond just that one club or how they felt that you made a big difference and a couple of examples of what Parthit probably talked about, how you made that difference. And that, that is what really gave you the, the satisfaction that you did something because when I was listening to it, it was you went there once, you saw some problems, and then suddenly you got the phone call. But the process could have added more to convincing us that, oh yeah, I see what you're feeling, and I want to feel the same way too. Other than that, like I said, you definitely came out very sincere about this topic and meant what you said here, which is, you know, it's a great experience. You've done it yourself. How many would like others to try it out as well? Okay. The sense I had is that there's enough here that it won't fit in the five or seven, you know, in the short speech. That this really would have been a speech in the way that we've heard others that lends itself to 10 or 15 minutes. And what I would have added in that case, and it's really valuable information, is support for the coaches. So are there a set of best practices? Are there mentors for the coaches? If you don't know how to coach and you want to learn how to coach, can you shadow another coach? That would reduce the resistance to let people to go in and do coaching. Instead of just saying, well, I've never done coaching, here's a club and we have these disruptive people, it's scary, I don't know what to do, and you know, it could actually work opposite to what you want by mentioning those situations. If you have, okay, I'll hold your hand and I'll let you in, and I'll go with you the first couple of times then I think it's really a good sales job. But you need more time. This is a big topic, and I can't imagine squeezing this part into the time you had a lot. process of being coached, how to uh, interpret them more. I want to commend you for one thing you did that's really well. At the beginning, you talk about the dancing. And at the end, you dance again. So that's always a great technique. So your ending corresponding to the beginning. Uh, I feel this is a great way to uh, leave non-lasting impressions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I wanted to add one little one, which somewhat the evaluator touched on, is the at the end of the question and answer period. It's always useful, I think, to if, if you can sum it up, sum up your point again, so that instead of ending with the last question, whatever it happened to be, you end with a, the call to action, or here's how you sign up, or go check out the website, or something like that. So thank you for that speech. I had one more. Bernard, I think, said distinguished hostmasters for the. Yeah. Degree or the accreditation is distinguished hostmaster. The organization is toastmasters. That's one that I get a lot. And I had people say mix up toastmasters, the organization, the person's a toastmaster, the organization is toastmasters. Bernard had what is it? It's supposed to be seven minutes plus three minutes for a total of ten, ten thirty. <laughs> he had six forty plus three fifty for a total of ten thirty. So I guess that's within. The time limit. I didn't stand up and make him stop. 